In this video, I'll be showing you every single course I've taken in university to get my engineering degree, and I'll be ranking them in order of difficulty from easiest to hardest. I'll be ranking them based on four metrics. How much time I invested in the course, how difficult was the course material to understand, how challenging were the exams, and how beneficial is the course when it comes to finding a job and working in the real world. So the six tier system we'll use is as follows. First, we have S tier. These courses are the essence or lifeblood of engineering. It doesn't matter how hard they are. Without them, we cannot be a mechanical engineer and we have to do our best to do well in these courses. Second, we have A tier. These courses are both essential and easy. Third, we have B tier. These courses are challenging but are still really important for becoming a great mechanical engineer. Fourth, we have C tier, which are courses that are easy and considered GPA boosters, but honestly are kind of useless. Fifth, we have D tier, which are courses that are both difficult and useless. They're essentially the worst of both worlds. Last, we have F tier, which are courses that make you want to switch majors and regret studying engineering in the first place. They're hard for no good reason and usually because the professor is just really bad at teaching. Let's begin with the fall semester of my freshman year, starting off with Calculus 1 and 2. These courses basically teach you the calculus you might have learned in high school if you took AP Calculus, specifically differentiation and integration. Since the exams and homeworks are pretty straightforward in this class and the knowledge I gained could be applied to my upper year engineering courses, I gotta give it an A. Next we have Physics 1, which covers mechanics. This course moved at a really fast pace, the homeworks were really challenging, and I will say I spent at least 8 hours on average per week studying and completing assignments. The exam averages for this class were super low in the ballpark of 50%, but because it helped me to do well in my other courses, I gotta give it a B. Writing a seminar was honestly just a repeat of AP English for me, and even though it was just a two credit course, the professor made it so much harder than it needed to be for no reason at all. The professor made us read a bunch of French literature and forced us to participate in in-class discussions and write these really long and tedious essays every week. So for that reason, I gotta give it a D. Next we have Engineering Computation, which I have to say is one of the top 5 most practical courses for engineers at my school. The course taught us how to write our own MATLAB scripts to solve engineering problems, and to this day, I still use what I learned in the real world, but because the exams and homeworks were so challenging and required so much time input, this class deserves a B rating. Now moving on to the spring semester of my freshman year, the first course I took was Multivariate Calculus. And I know the name itself might sound intimidating, but honestly the homeworks and exams are what you might find in any other typical math course. It's basically doing math in 3D if that makes sense. Okay, probably not. You essentially apply the differentiation and integration that you learn in Calculus 1 and 2 to functions involving several variables instead of just a single variable. The course is useful for engineers who do a lot of engineering analysis like FEA and CFD, so for that reason, I gotta give it a B. Next we have Physics 2, which is Electricity and Magnetism. Like Physics 1, it was really challenging, but the exams were easier because the problems were more like the homework problems that we did, and what we learned could be applied to a lot of upper level engineering courses, so for that reason, I gotta give it a B. Writing and Research Seminar was a continuation of last semester's writing course, but the focus now was on technical writing. We got to choose and read our own book related to a disruptive technology, and the professor was this really nice guy from Harvard University who didn't nitpick when grading our essays. Also, this class was actually useful for engineers, and it helped me to write high quality emails, test reports, and technical papers in grad school and industry. So for that reason, I gotta give it an A. Next we have Mechanical Design for Manufacturing. This is an intro level course for mechanical engineering students that provided a high level understanding and sneak peek into various engineering and design concepts like stress and strain, bending moments, different types of threads, and tolerances. This course had no exams and there was a final project where we had to design a winch pulley system to lift the 500 pound load off the ground using components sourced from McMaster car. Ultimately, this course convinced me that mechanical engineering was the right major for me, so for that reason, I had to give this course an A rating. Tissue engineering and drug delivery was honestly a very interesting course for first year engineering students to see if they wanted to major in biomedical engineering. There were no exams or homeworks except for a final presentation, but since it's not really relevant to mechanical engineers, I gotta give this course a C rating. This concludes my first year courses. Now we'll talk about my second year first semester courses, starting with reading and writing Chinese. My university required all engineering students to take a humanities course, and this was the course I decided to go with 
because I already knew how to speak Chinese. This course is honestly kind of useless for engineers, but since the exams and homeworks consist of writing very basic Chinese pinyin characters, I gotta give this course a C rating. Next, we have differential equations. This class really wasn't hard at all, but the professor made it an absolute nightmare by making us buy his $200 textbook, which to be honest, the only place it should be in is in a trash can. And to make matters worse, he was really bad at teaching. For that reason, I had to invest unnecessary time into finding better resources and practice problems. And so this course for sure deserves an F rating. Design and manufacturing was a really practical course and overall a great experience. We learned all of the design and processing steps required in manufacturing and how to apply those things in designing and fabricating a desk lamp organizer as a team on time within budget and to specifications similar to what an actual engineer might do in the real world. For that reason, I gotta give it an S rating. Electric circuits was definitely a challenging course, especially the six hour circuit labs that we have to do every two weeks. But the exam and homework problems were very similar. And honestly, this course will be useful for any mechanical engineering job because most things today use electricity. For that reason, I gotta give this course a B rating. Next, we have energy and thermodynamics, which requires a lot of dedication and involves doing a lot of practice problems to master all the different types of power cycles, but you get used to it pretty quickly. The exams are straightforward and many of the concepts like energy, heat, and work are used in the real world. For that reason, I gotta give this course a B. Moving on to the second semester of my sophomore year, we have Intro to Linear Algebra for Engineers. This course was not easy by any stretch of the imagination because it presented math in a completely new perspective and many of the concepts were pretty abstract. My professor did an okay job at teaching the material, but this course was just so overwhelming and fast paced for a two credit course that I simply didn't have time to study for the quizzes and exams. I also used very little of what I learned in this class in my other classes, so for that reason this course gets an F rating. Mechanics 1, also known as statics, was pretty straightforward because it was just forced analysis of non-moving structures like bridges and trusses. We used a great textbook and the professor actually knew what he was talking about. It's also something I use a lot in my upper engineering level courses, but the workload was just a big pill to swallow because we had weekly homeworks and quizzes, a midterm, a final exam, and a final project where we had to design a truss. So for that reason, I have to give it a B rating. Next, we have Intro to Material Science, which talked about Hooke's Law, how materials deform and break at the microscopic level, and how to make materials stronger. This class was also really practical and wasn't too hard. Also, it's really important for us to know about different types of heat treatments as mechanical engineers. So for that reason, I gotta give this class an S rating. CAD and Machine Components was another really practical course that taught us how to create 3D models and technical drawings, how to do tolerance stack-up analysis, and how to design things that are manufacturable. We were tasked with designing a gearbox assembly as a team that gave me a taste of what working in the world road as a mechanical engineer is like, so I gotta give it an S. The professor also made everyone in the class purchase this really handy book called the Machinery's Handbook, which is essentially the bible for mechanical engineers. I used it literally almost every day in grad school and I still do as a professional engineer. So I recommend anyone who is studying mechanical engineering to go check it out. If you're interested, I've included the link in the description below. Now ranking my first semester classes of junior year, starting out with intro to architecture. To be honest, I took this course with the intention of boosting my GPA, but sadly the professor made this class to be a GPA killer instead. We had to memorize hundreds upon thousands of buildings and analyze each of their architectural styles. Thinking about this course just triggers me. So this course definitely deserves an F rating. Engineering Economy talked about how to convert future cash flows into present amounts at a specific rate of return to determine the attractiveness of multiple projects. I don't know if that makes any sense. We also learned a lot of practical skills like how to read annual reports and how to determine break-even points of machinery and different types of investments. The exam was also a take-home, so I gotta give this course an A rating. Next, we have Mechanics of Materials. This course was challenging because it covered an extensive amount of new concepts like bending moments and shear diagrams, material failure theories, how columns buckle, the list goes on and on. But because everything we learned in this class was very practical and many of the job interviews asked questions related to this class, I can't complain and I gotta give it a B rating. The last course I took was product design. 
This course was very similar to the CAD and machine components course that I took last semester in the sense that we have to use CAD to design electrical mechanical assembly, but this time we have to manufacture it using the CNC mills and lathes in our school's machine shop. Our group designed a donut shaped piezoelectric load cell and it turned out to be a very solid class, so I gotta give it an S rating. The second semester of my junior year, I took Mechanics 2, aka Dynamics, where we analyzed the forces and displacements of things in motion. This class made me want to cry and rethink why I got into engineering in the first place. The professor also wasn't the greatest at teaching, and we spent so much time deriving the equations of motion. One time I remember we spent half the class doing a single problem that took up six blackboards, which I still somehow find mind-boggling seven years later. To make matters worse, the exam was so much harder than the assignments, and the only thing I gained from this class was a couple white hairs, so I gotta give this course an F rating. We didn't have fluid mechanics, which taught us all about how fluids behave using things like Bernoulli's and Navier-Stokes equations. Honestly, I really enjoyed this course, and even though the problems were a bit challenging, I thought the professor was really good at teaching, the textbook was well written, and we did some really practical labs like measuring flow in the wind tunnel. Fluids knowledge is also crucial for any mechanical engineer, so this course definitely deserves an S. Probability and Statistics for Mechanical Engineers was a fairly straightforward course that taught us things like Bayes' Theorem, probability distributions, and p-values that are used a lot in the real world for quality control. The exam problems were very similar to the homework problems, and the professor allowed us to make a cheat sheet, so I gotta give it an A. Next we have Supply Chain Engineering, which was an advanced elective that I chose to take because it sounded interesting and not too hard, but I was wrong. There was so much probability distribution and Q-theory involved, and the problems that the professor made us do were just inexplicably hard. What blew my mind was we even learned how to price airfare tickets using different pricing strategies, which is totally unexpected for a class titled Supply Chain Engineering. Having said all of that, I'll still give this class an F. Moving on to the first semester of my senior year, the first course I took was heat transfer, which has the three modes by which heat travels, conduction, convection, and radiation. The exams and homeworks were pretty straightforward, and we also learned how to use COMSOL to optimize the design of a frying pan used to cook steak, which is a pretty important computational skill to have, so this course gets an A. Mechanical vibrations was another advanced elective that I took. To be honest, this class was way too theoretical with all the spring mass damper questions, and every problem seemed to involve convoluted differential equations. The professor was good at teaching the material, but no matter how much practice you do, there always seems like something you don't know. So for that reason, I gotta give it a D rating. Next is Electromechanical Systems Design. In this course, we learned all about belts, gears, lead screws, motors, switches, and sensors. We also worked in groups to design a lab on a chip assembly line where we got to select and size components to satisfy various design requirements and constraints like timing and budget. So because the things we learned in this class were super useful and the exams were ones that we could actually study for, this class gets an S. Is it me or am I being too generous here? Finally, for my last semester of engineering, I took a course called Instrumentation and Theory of Experiments. This course was an absolute nightmare and abomination solely because of the workload. The material and the theory itself really weren't bad at all because it was literally just measuring different physical parameters with various types of sensors and acquiring data. But I swear, all of these labs were designed by psychopaths. Although there were only four labs we had to do in total, including instrumentation, strain gauges, pressure and drag, and temperature calibration, all of my labs ended up being over 90 pages long because there were just so many requirements and uncertainty analysis we had to do. Worst of all is we couldn't even use Microsoft Word to write our lab reports and we had to use latex. L latex. 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 You get the point. I type so much that my hands develop blisters. So for that reason, this class gets an F with flying colors. Next we have Mechanical Engineering Capstone Experience, which was the culmination of my four years of mechanical engineering and university. Working together with a team, we collaborated with a load cell manufacturer in Maine to redesign and improve one of their cantilever load cells that experienced repeatability issues. We essentially applied all of the different areas of expertise gained from each of our other classes to complete this semester long project. Because this class is so practical and hands on, I gotta give it an S. 
Finally, we have business technology innovation, which talk about business models, the role of engineering within a business, and how to turn technology into a business. Honestly, all we did in this course was read Harvard Business Review case studies and talk about them. So it ended up being a really easy, but kind of useless course. So I gotta give it a C. So these are all of the courses that I took during my four years in university, ranked by difficulty and usefulness. To summarize, courses in the S tier are essential and you should do your best to master the course material. Courses in the A and B tier are also important and you should strive to do well in these courses, but it's not the end of the world if you forget some of the material. The ones in the C and D tier are just kind of useless and you should definitely prioritize the ones in the S, A, and B tiers if you don't have enough time to study because you partied way too hard over the weekend. Finally, the F tier courses will make you want to cry and you should be prepared for the worst. I just want to mention that the classes I talked about are mainly my own opinion, but they are backed up by what other students said as well as the class averages for the projects and exams. Another Another thing to keep in mind is that the professor ultimately determines how easy or hard a course is. A good professor can make a difficult course fun and exciting, while a bad professor can make the easiest course a living nightmare. So anyways, thank you so much for watching, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you're curious to see what my engineering grades were like for the courses in this video, go ahead and click here. And if you'd like to see what a day in the life of a mechanical engineer is like, go ahead and check out this video. Peace.